Hey, hey, welcome back. Uh, our next session is Mark Smith from Screen West, uh, Level Up Your Application. Um, I'm going to keep this really, really quick, but we did just want to say thank you so much to Screen West, who has sponsored us, but not only that, supports the whole WA games industry. They're always pushing for us, and we all appreciate it, not just the WA games team, but the everyone here, everyone watching at home. We really appreciate it. So thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> um, quick note, because this is such a short session, we are going to try to do Q&As at the end, depending on time. Uh, if you have questions, chuck them in Slido, and the most upvoted ones are going to go first until we run out of time. Here's Mark. Thank you. Yeah, and thanks for um, having me, and thanks to Caitlin and everyone involved. This is such an awesome event, so really happy to be talking here on behalf of Screen West. So... For anyone who doesn't know Screen West, we're a, a funding agency, non-for-profit, uh, and my job as games manager is to basically help the WA uh, indie game scene as much as I can uh, through grants and programs and travel initiatives. And uh, But one of the main things we do is we give out um, grants based on applications. And now that we've you know been through a couple of rounds and we've seen a lot of applications, uh, I've put together just a really quick overview of some um, tips and tricks around uh, getting being successful in your applications uh, based on some stuff that we've seen that's uh, on the good and bad side of uh, things that we see and we see a lot um, come through because of the demand so uh, hopefully it's informative um, unfortunately it's not great timing because all of our funds are now closed so <laughs> uh, but I'm hoping that this advice will be useful for people who will apply in the future if you're currently working on a game and you want to get funding in the future either through us or Screen Australia hopefully these tips are applicable to some people in the audience and hopefully it's informative for everyone so this is the do's and please don't do's from an agency perspective presented by me and uh, PowerPoint's designer tool which I lean on very heavily uh, so Screen West, we like a publisher, but nicer. Um, so we don't want a cut from your profits. We don't want a stake in your company. We just want to give out grants and have successful stories come from WA. So, but just like publishers, we get a lot of applications. So um, one of the things we do is we, through ourselves and through external assessors, we get the applications in and we try and do our best to make sure that they're all thoroughly assessed. Um, and because of the sheer number that we have and how competitive it is, one of the things I'd say is to try and make your application stand out and be memorable. And one of the ways you can do that is capture the general idea early. So when you're looking at an application, it's very similar to if a publisher is looking at, say, a pitch for a game. They want to really understand the game as quickly as possible. Um, doesn't mean that you can't go into details, but generally you want the first few sentences, first few slides, some imagery, really sell the idea quickly. Um, and as I said, with uh, yeah, drawings and, and, and visual aid is really helpful, even if it's crude drawings, even if it's just some sketches in a notebook, like um, Michael's talk before was really great and he showed some of his little drawings of mechanics and stuff like that. If that sells the idea quickly, totally beneficial um, rather than just detailing everything in um, size 10 text. Uh, and also prove that you're in the business of making games, not just that you have a cool idea. So we're, we're looking to support people that not only have a great game idea and are great game developers, but they have a business sensibility that they're going to go ahead and prove themselves as someone who is going to really see this plan through. So we're looking at people who have solid um, development plans. They understand the timelines of how long things take. Uh, don't make you know a 200 level puzzle game and assign two days to testing at the end of the cycle. Uh, you really got to understand that process. And if that means that part of your application is uh, you know paying a consultant for the business side of things, that's totally fine. Or if you want to bring in a uh, producer or someone who's experienced in doing this before, that's totally fine as well. Um, at the same time, you can be a solo dev as well, and if you have that business sensibility and you prove within your timelines and within your proposed plan that you're going to deliver on what you say you're going to deliver, as long as it's reasonable, it's going to look good to us. So that's the first little bit of information. Uh, next is accurately uh, price your project. So. Um, we see a lot of applications come in where they see, oh, the, t the top number is $100,000, let's get $100,000, and then they work their way back and think, oh, how are we going to you know, spend this money? And it's, it's pretty obvious when this happens. Uh, that doesn't mean that 
don't go for the top amount. If your game is going to cost that much to make, that's totally fine. But at the same time, if you're looking at a, an application, you should be looking at how much it's going to cost you first and then accurately price how much you're going for because it's pretty obvious to us when someone's just seen, this is as much money as I can possibly get, so I'm going to go for it. Um, at the same time, don't undersell yourself and don't underpay yourself and your team. So we've seen uh, lots of applications do almost the complete opposite where they're going into it, they haven't released a game before and they think, oh, you know, like if we do it for five bucks an hour, we can probably get it out. Oh, if we only apply for this little bit of money, we're probably more likely going to get it. That's not necessarily the case. Don't undersell yourself and how you know talented you are as a developer and how much you deserve to be paid. And that goes for your team as well. We don't want to see someone who's working on a game and they're going to be paying themselves uh, you know, a, a ton of money for the project, but then they're hiring you know, five people and paying them you know, like spare change to work on the project. We want to see fair uh, distribution of funds for the whole team. Probably going a bit fast here. I'll try and slow down a little bit. Uh, accurate market research. So this is a big one. So my first point is just do it as well because <laughs> we see a lot of applications um, you're trying to prove that your game is going to be successful in a market and part of that is understanding your pathway to market and it's understanding your audience and it's understanding your competition. Um, so I would highly recommend that if you're going in for an application, do some solid market research, look at some other games that are similar to yours and what works well for them. Uh, and also psychographics over demographics. So um, this one's a little subjective, but when it comes to games, everyone loves games. Um, you know, your game that you're designing, it's very rare that you're going to be designing a game that's specifically for one gender and one sort of age group. People of all, you know, uh, walks of life enjoy games. So instead, try and look at psychographics, the type of person that's going to be playing your game, when they're going to be playing game, do they like playing, you know, uh, on the couch with their friends or do they like you know sitting on the phone and playing it with their their kid or do they play it one-handed on a phone on the bus in the morning that sort of thing we want to see that you really understand your audience uh, and then another big one this is one we see a lot don't compare your one-year games project with two people on it to a game that took a hundred people three years to make so if you're making you know uh, a game where you run around uh, in a city and you say hijack cars and you say, well, Grand Theft Auto sells really well. Um, so we're going to make billions of dollars from our game because we also run around and hijack cars in a city. Um, be realistic with your uh, market research. Try and find, if you're going to compare your game to another, sure, compare the mechanics and what people enjoy. But in terms of sales, try and find a game that represents a similar sort of timeline. Try and find out how big the team was at the time. Or scale it back a bit and say that, you know, here's a game that had five people worked on it for a couple of years. I've got a team of two people and we've got a year. We're looking to, you know, capture about half of what this game achieved or keep it, keep it kind of realistic. Don't have really naive marketing. Um, we see it a lot and it's, uh, you know, it's, it hurts your application in the end if you don't do that market research. Um, this is, this is actually my final point. I've sort of rushed through this, but this is a really important one. Um, the criteria is listed in the guidelines and it's available for everyone when you apply for funding. So make sure that you read it and understand it because those are the points that the game is actually going to be assessed on. So really get to understand that criteria. Um, and if you don't address it directly, at least be sure that it's covered in the documentation and the materials. So um, if you're not going to say specifically this is the reason why, for example, one of the guidelines in our latest round was uh, benefits to WA. If you're not going to list specifically what the benefits to WA are, then make sure somewhere in your application that when we're reading through it, we say, oh, like, this is going to be great for WA because of X, Y, and Z. Um, and also call ahead if you're unsure. So also at the bottom of the, uh, the guidelines is the phone number to call Screen West. I try and be at my desk as often as I can. If I'm not, I'll get a, a, a missed number and I'll call it back. Um, and if there's something glaringly missing, like I will let you know. So I had, we had a lot of applications come through the recent uh, round that closed uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I think I only had you know two or three people call ahead or send something ahead 
um, to say, hey, can you have a look at this? Um, I'm not going to look at it and say, oh, you need to do X, Y, and Z to get the best scores out of the assessors. But I'm going to look at it and say, oh, you've, you've done all of this, but it would really be beneficial if you, say, marketed your game or did some market research for your game or oh, you've done all of this, but I don't see any mention of accessibility in here. That would be great if you shared how your game is accessible as well. So those are the main points that I want to bring up about applying. Uh, the other thing I'll say is that, you know, we, if, if you're unsuccessful as well, like we love a lot of the games that we come through and unfortunately we don't have an endless supply of money. I wish we did. <laughs> um, and so hopefully if, uh, your application is un unsuccessful and you've seen some of this criteria here, you can uh, go in again if there's future uh, funding rounds with some confidence, take in the feedback that we give and you'll likely be rewarded for it. So that's everything that I have so far. So that was a pretty, pretty rapid one. So I can probably open up to a few questions if people have them in the audience or online. We have time for one question. Sorry to keep it like super to time, but we've got a quick changeover and they're actually in the audience. Yeah. Hey, I was just gonna quickly ask, how far in development do you recommend a game be before pitching it to Screen West? And what sort of content, like a vertical slice or sh should, should it be further or less than that before you sort of pitch it? Um, that's a great question. So um, the way that we've structured the funding at Screen West for games is to ideally target games at multiple stages of development. So we have three streams. We have pre-production, production, production and post-production. Um, so pre-production, we're happy with a game design document, a solid understanding of what the game is, some pictures, some information, but we don't actually need to see a working game yet. The idea of that stream of the fund is to get you to that prototype that you can then either get a publisher on board or get further um, uh, funding from someone like Screen Australia or another agency. Uh, the production round, which is the higher 100K round, we expect to see a working playable prototype. So you've gotten the game, you've proved that you can make you know, a solid game where the mechanics mostly work, you've got some sort of art direction, you've got some sort of story and game to go with, but you need the money to get it over the line. And we see applications that are in lots of different stages of that. So some that have just got their prototype out the door and they're like, all right, we need the extra money to finish the rest of the game. Or we get ones that have finished most of the game, but they need that extra money to go towards marketing. They need to do all of the testing they need to squash bugs, that sort of thing. So um, yeah, lots of different stages basically. And then post-production, once you've finished a game and you need some money for localization, for porting, for bug fixing, market community engagement, that sort of thing. So basically any level. We actually have to cut it there because we have the quickest changeover ever, but are you hanging around? Yeah, yeah I'm sticking around. Yeah, if you want any more questions, come grab me and I'll be happy to answer them there. Hey, was good. There you go. Uh, cool. Well, thank you so much for that. And we'll see you all back in 15 minutes. <laughs>